Welcome back everybody and today we're going to work on a set of VW taillight lamps. I started these some time ago and got sidetracked and moved on to something else as seems to be the case too often and I'm a little disappointed in how the alignment has turned up. You can see when you put them on the stand the overall oval is lined up with the stem straight when you put the tail light lens on uh, things get kind of thrown out of whack so i'm going to take that on this lamp the metal plate off and i'm going to shift it just a little bit so that it'll sit straight and then we're going to make a pull chain on it and we're going to use a spark plug as the pull chain so it should look something like this hanging and you'll just pull down on the spark plug to turn the light off and on uh, I think it'll work fine. I think we'll have plenty of room for a bulb in there. I mean, gosh, it took the guts out. Normally the car has, you know, the housing, the lamp to hold the, sorry, not the housing, the socket. So that's what we have on the inside of it. And these are pretty roached uh, lamps anyway. There's not much good left on them. They're pretty punky and the brackets were all rusted off of them was why they were replaced. But it is funny how you think that you've got that straight and lined up and it is when it's just on the stand. The point, what I mean is the point of the ovals lined up with the straight line. Um, but when you put the, the actual tail light on because they're not exactly straight on the oval it's it's kicked out and I just I don't like that I can't live with it so we're gonna cut that off and just tip it a little bit that way so I'll have to probably tack it fit it make sure it's right before we permanently weld that problem is I may have to cut new ovals for that because I'm not sure once I take those off they're going to be much left of them let's see what we can what we can come up with. One side that was broke off I just have made a little couple little brackets I'll just prep the metal on both sides of those. This one I gotta cut off at that angle right there and weld that to the inside. I could just weld around the edges, but I hate to just in case uh, I decide later. I might actually want these. I don't think they're that great shape-wise. But I hate to completely destroy them by tack welding around the edge in case you ever need to take it apart. So I'm going to just tack that there, that one up there, so that they can attach like this one does with that little hole and go into our plate that way. Keep them both the same. like welding paper. Blew through it a couple times even. Good thing that's not holding up the car. I think it'll be strong enough. Bottom one was actually the one I was worried about, but it's not a whole lot of meat up here on this upper one get to. This is hard to get to. I think that's going to hold okay. Probably should put one. See if I can drop one right down in there and maybe on this other side. It's not like it's holding up a house or anything. 
Yeah, I think I'll go ahead and try and drop one down in the corner there. Can I say I just hate redoing stuff when I mess it up the first time? So I've got everything off of there. I have the lenses uh, on those two metal pieces I've cut. I've actually gone around with a marker. This one overhangs a little bit. So once I get it welded on, then I'm going to cut it off just a little bit around there. I'm not going to cut it just yet because my plan is to put a set of those rubber gaskets. I have an extra set of those around just to neaten up that edge. And so it may not matter. I may not have to trim it out. But I think you need the lens on to kind of get it adjusted where it needs to go. But I'm just going to tack it and then pull that lens off because I definitely don't want to damage it. So basically I've got an angle cut. Can't see anything, can you? Got an angle cut on that. And it just matters how I pivot that bottom reflector portion. That's why I've been putting it off. <laughs> been dreading it. It's gonna all be about the uh, get you tightened up here. I'll show you what I mean. So I've got a, a pretty nice slant on the end of that because there has to be because the light is actually kind of sloped down. So if I put that even with the, you still can't see anything, even with the uh, with the angle I've got cut on that, where I kind of had them before was like that, where the oval is straight. You can see the tail light wasn't, it's just subtle difference, just moving it a degree or two. So I think the bottom little place, see if I can get you where you can see it, where that paint grip is on the bottom of that, I think if that can be lined up with my pole, in pretty good shape. So that's what I'm going to aim for. The hard part's just holding it. For the record, I tried dismarking it the time before with just a Sharpie marker on the back, and that's when I messed it up. So I stopped on the first one, fortunately. But yeah, I would just mark it, but it's just too hard to hit it correctly. I don't have enough uh, pieces to tee myself up for dead level and straight so we're just gonna try uh, I'm gonna try this method and see if that works. All right so I've got a magnet set up on the back and hopefully that'll hold it just long enough for me to get a tack on it and then we will yank off. It's so bizarre because there's that does not look straight on the back. Just weird just a weird angle. Now the trick is, if I want them to be a matching set, I gotta get them kind of close on height before I attack that second one. Whose bright idea was this, anyway? Jeez Louise. It's been a couple of days uh, since I've worked on these, and I mentioned before that I just hate redoing things that I have messed up, but I think I've got them lined up as close as they're gonna get with me doing them anyway. Uh, I just wanted to mention a couple things. In my process of making these, Aaron discovered that one of the taillight lenses I had on my lamps was in better shape than the one was on his car. So, <laughs> this is the one that came off his car. And I say better shape, it actually was just not an actual Hella lens. So he had one good one, and this one on there, this is an aftermarket of some description. Just show you the quick difference here. This one is cracked and busted. This is one of the ones I was using on there before. And I was going to go out. I think I have one more Hella lens. But... So these two are identical in shape, identical in size, yada yada, reflectors on the bottom. But one of them is actually a Hella lens with a mark, and it says Made in Germany on it. So these are more to the original style. This is probably an original lens. Uh, I'll keep this one, but it does have that big, gnarly busted place on it. I'm going to keep this one too just because. But you notice the color is just slightly different. This one, the, the aftermarket one, is a little bit more orange. The Hello lenses were more of a deep red, more of a had more of a purple tint to them. This one has more of an orange tint to it. 
So I lost my good lens, but I did have out in the Volkswagen pile, the parts pile, parts bin, I had two in decent shape. There's only a chip on the edge of this one, I think, up here. Yeah, just a chip right there. These are European tail lenses. So you notice that they have uh, this glaring orange cap on top. So the turn signal section of these had the orange caps on top. And these actually say, I don't know if that's showing up in the camera or not, they actually say VW on them. So these are, these are Volkswagen lenses. They just are uh, the European model. So that being said, we're going to use those. And I think those will be just fine on there. Just desk lamps. It's not like it's going on the back of a car or anything. You don't have to keep it period correct or uh, uh, country correct. And then for the lamp, I'm using the little sockets that are up underneath the conduit uh, bracket there. Those sockets look like this, and they just have a threaded piece. And I'm putting the socket, uh, the uh, conduit holder in, and then just threading this down against it. And what that's doing, that's pushing that up against my wire there, and it should be just fine. These are incidentally a smaller socket. I think they're called E12s. Let's look and see what it says on here. E12C. And that's what those are. That has an LED exit bulb in it. They work perfect. So we're going to leave that at that. I'm going to use this kind of a pull switch. These two don't match identically, but the end portions are very, very close. One is metal on the inside. And the other one is just black plastic. But this is what I'm planning to use for our uh, pull chain. And I think it'll work fine if we just tuck it right in there and drill a hole so that that comes out about right here. And we'll put our pull chain on there. Um, I did manage to find some black edging rather than using the entire rubber um, gasket for that. So we should be fine there. I hate to waste a, a good gasket on these. So let me get that uh, metal tail lamp portion off. Try and put those uh, the uh, edging on there and see what that looks like. And then we'll kind of figure out where we're going to draw holes for our cord and our pull chains and uh, clean these up and we should be good to go. Would have been really nice to have had that right there but there's not room on the back for me to get my switch back there is why I didn't do that that's why I had to move it out to the side It'd been really nice to put it about right right there earlier in the in the videos I had said this was a paint drip it's actually a uh, vent Let's see if I can get that angle right there's a Little, I think that's to drain water out. These are always rusted right there, though, so they held water down in here. These have a little divot in them. I'm wondering if that wasn't to drain water, like a little drain hole or something. I don't know. That's what it kind of looks like to me. I never noticed that before on any of the ones I've ever worked on, so. That's where they always rusted out, though, is right down here at the bottom. Get water in them, get a cracked lens, or it'd start leaking behind the seal and run down in and rust the tail light out. Anyway, switches are in. Okay, now that we've kind of got that figured out and I did kind of just go clean up the, the welds a little bit on the back side of those. The next thing I guess is to figure out where I want the cords to come out. 
And actually, I didn't mark which of these is which. I probably should have done that. That's that guy. So I need to mark where I kind of want my electrical cord to come out. Can you see anything? Am I totally blocking your view? Let me back you off just a hair. That's a little better. Sometimes when I set the camera up, I don't realize uh, how close you were. The, um, I'm going to use like a vintage electrical cord. So I think it's probably going to be best if it comes out pretty much right uh, close down here to the, to the pole. Just because I want to come out and kind of wrap around it. So let's get one of these mocked up, get the light back in it, and kind of figure out where that angle is going to be for that. And then I'll mark a hole where we need to put our cord. All right, so pretty much have that lined up where that's going to go. So I'm thinking my initial uh, kind of assumption of putting that about right there. The only problem I'm seeing with that is my switch. And that'll probably work there if I put it right there. So I have a lot of room over here. I have to run my wires. And I guess I could turn it. I'm trying to keep everything away from the bulb. I just don't want it blocking the light. The bulb won't get hot. It's an LED. So what do you think about maybe running it out over here on the back side? of or on the top side of the switch and then I could just um, split that switch and go this way with it what do we think right there I think if I put it right here I'm gonna have too much bulk of wiring right against that bulb and not that I care about heat it's not gonna get hot but it's just gonna block the light so let's go for just right above that switch on the opposite side. Let's go like right there. We could bring it in. I could bring it in a little bit maybe. Closer to the cord. Or closer to the pole. Go in about right there. I gotta be able to get a drill through there. So my weld stops right there. So I could go right there. That'd probably work. We're going with it anyway. I just wanted to point out something real quick. This is why I boo-booed the first time. You see? This whole thing is kicked completely out of alignment with that. Put the taillight on. Looks perfectly straight. Annoying. So I'm using a select a bit to drill those out. And this one actually happens to be a brand name. This one's uh, Irwin. Typically I buy these Harbor Freight ones. But... Uh, nice thing about it is it kind of puts a bevel on it so you can go on the back side. Just kind of get all those little shavings off the back that pop out on, when you drill it out. So there's our hole for our cord on that one. I just need to drill out the second one. All right, I think what I'm going to do with all these pieces now is just take them back. I'm going to take everything apart and kind of take it back and clean it, kind of wire wheel everything that needs to be wired wheeled. And then we'll assemble it, put it all back together, and uh, put some electricity to them and see what they look like. I'm a little disappointed in how punky that stem was I welded to. I probably should have just cut that off and started over. But all in all, they'll work, they'll be fine, and uh, Volkswagen people will hopefully find them amusing. So let's go get those cleaned up, and we'll bring you back when I get ready to put them all back together. Just in case anyone was wondering, Used a Volkswagen pulley, half for the stands on each of these. And then on the bottom, anybody know what that is? I'll tell ya. That is the backside of an electrical, one of those porcelain lights. Back in the old days when they made them metal. Yeah. Alright, so we've moved our little assembly line for these into... Uh, what I refer to as the art room. And uh, I think what I'm gonna use for lamp cord is this. Sorry, I, it, the lighting's gonna be a little bit weird. I have taken my spotters that are up above here 
and I've dumbed a couple of them down because you get a glare on this camera. So, sorry, there's going to be a little bit of a shadow created for you, but better than having a sun glare in your eye the whole time. You got a little bit of one right now. Let's see if I can adjust you. Well, I think we're just going to have to live with it. Well, you're going to have to live with it. I don't have to look at it after tonight. I have red cord. Kind of a kind of a neat color. But I don't think I think that's kind of too much color going on. I don't know. What do you think about it? I also have just like a twisted black, just like a braided black. Probably have enough of that to do them. I kind of like the uh, black and white though. Let's see what the see what that looks like up against it again. That's brand new and shiny. Never even had that one open. Think about that. I'm liking that. Let's go with that one. All right, so we're gonna go with that black and white check cord. Uh, one of the things that I decided to do, it has these little reflector divider, light bulb divider um, tabs in there. Can you see that okay? They, um, I think to get the most light for what we're using it for, they just slide out and I'm just gonna pull them out. So on both of those lights, we're just going to pull them out so that it's uh, as much light in the situation as we can get. All right, let's get to assembling. All right, I've tried to save you all the boring parts. So we have our, our socket in, our holder, socket holder, our switch ends, our socket ends, and we have uh, the hole drilled to run our wire through, so we just need to make that happen. Now typically what I do is I make my uh, cord six feet, because I hate short cords. When it's six feet on a desk lamp, it usually is long enough. Uh, the two of these, I'm probably just going to stick with that. I like to make it a little bit longer than six feet sometimes on some of the bigger lamps, but uh, since we have a pair of them, let's just go with, uh, with six feet. So let me go get a tape. We will measure this out. We'll cut two pieces, run it up through the back of this one. If you can see that hole or not. The hole we cut back here in the back. Cord's in the way right back there. And then we will uh, build our switch and all of that. Now what I use to do that on the inside is I use uh, Harbor Freight Marine Heat Shrink. This stuff works awesome. And as soon as you see kind of the clear gelatin uh, waterproofing come out, you know you're good. And it works really well with cloth cord. So let me go get um, the tape measure. We'll cut that down and we'll put the cord in and wire this one up. If you have never had the pleasure of working with cloth cord, uh, I highly recommend it. You will have a new appreciation for people who do. Your hands have to be squeaky clean, which mine rarely are. And <laughs> if you fray it or nick it or pick it in any way, it's going to show. So we're going to try and move everything out of our way that could potentially do that. Because we definitely don't want to do that if we can help it. Maggie the guard dog. Maggie the guard dog? What are you barking at? Hush your bush. 
yeah got that one all done and uh, I put a little bit of uh, that heat shrink back here too just so it wouldn't cut into that one I like that it looks pretty good it's a weird angle on camera but yeah let's wire a plug too. I'll just spiral it kind of around. Pretty cool. Now we just got to do our uh, um, spark plug pull chains. Let's get that other one wired up and put them together and figure out what we're going to do for those spark plugs. So I used an exit light. It's not coming through very good. There we go. T6 tube LED. But this is the best part. Last 13 years. So my initial plan was to do a spark plug and get the glare right in you. Sorry. You know, something like that. Took a boot. And my son says these would be better. Out of the mouths of a four-year-old, he said they, he thought those would be classier. So we're going to go with those. I have a big pile of old knobs and... Volkswagen parts. Found two of those. Get those cleaned up and put those on. Mm -hmm. 